It was true last year. And even after all of the quarterback reshuffling we expect to take place in the NFC North, it's even more true this year. The Green Bay Packers are the best position team in the NFC North moving forward. You are Locked On Packers. Your daily Green Bay Packers podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. You are Locked On Packers, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm Peter Bukowski, and I cover the Packers for The Leap, a newsletter I would love for you to subscribe to. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked On Packers. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Spotify, Google Podcasts, wherever you find podcasts, you will find Locked On Packers, the number one Packers podcast on the internet. And the show, for fans who know what happened, they want to know why and how. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On for $20 off your first ticket purchase. Last minute tickets at the lowest price, guaranteed. That's Game Time, baby. Before the season, I said the Packers were in the best position in the division from a roster building standpoint. And one of the foundational reasons was if Jordan Love didn't work, they were likely going to have a high pick and extra draft capital. We thought at the time, another first in this year's draft. That turned out, of course, not to be the case with what happened with Aaron Rodgers. But the other part of this was if Jordan Love is good, you got a, you got a good player and his ceiling is because of his talent, because of his physical gifts, was extremely high. That turned out to be exactly what happened, kind of in both instances. The team got off to a bit of a fast start, maybe a mirage start, and then had some issues. Jordan Love, maybe not him. And then it turns out, no, no, definitely Jordan Love is him. The young talent that they added, the receivers, the pass catchers at tight end, They blossomed right away. And you have these these young ascending defensive players, Carl Brooks and Devontae Wyatt and Kobe Wooden and Lucas Van Ness. And you have some issues. Eric Stokes injury. Carrington Valentine has to step in. And it turns out Carrington Valentine is a capable player. You don't get the kind of productivity you need out of your safeties. But that's that's a fixable position. You go into the offseason with flexibility and a really good coach, and then you also have a defensive coordinator, you can make a change there. That's low-hanging fruit. This plan, as we've talked about on the show before, worked even better than, I think, the Packers, if you put them on truth serum, would say that they expected it to work. Meanwhile, the Chicago Bears... Oh, the Chicago Bears. Justin Fields headed to Pittsburgh for a sixth round pick. Yeah, it can be a four, but that's all. He didn't even get the Trey Lance package in Dallas. That's what the league thinks of Justin Fields. And that plan from the beginning was flawed. They decided to build around Justin Fields one more time rather than use the number one overall pick on a quarterback, whether it was Bryce Young or CJ Stroud or, or Anthony Richardson. I would I would argue that if they had done picked two of those three guys, they would be in much better position than they are now. Bryce Young, I, I thought that that was always a reach. I would have taken Stroud or Richardson and felt really good about it. And I would have gotten whatever I could get for Justin Fields last year. Now they're going to take Caleb Williams. It worked out for them. But the odds, history says, the chances of Caleb Williams being as good as Jordan Love is right now, already has proven himself to be, is lower than 50-50. The Vikings are probably going to trade up for J.J. McCarthy. The odds of him being better than Jordan Love is right now, history tells us, lower than 50-50. That's just historically how this works. Because Jordan Love, a 
especially in the second half of the year, played like one of the five best quarterbacks in the league. He has the potential to be one of the five best, one of the three best quarterbacks in the league. He has the potential to be the best quarterback in the league, not named Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he really does have that ability to go along with all the youth, the pass catchers who are only going to get better, all of the, the draft picks that the Packers have this year. Put the stack them up roster piece by roster piece against these other teams. The Bears are built on a hope and a prayer quarterback. Now the number one overall pick and, and a borderline generational talent. But ask Jacksonville how's that worked out for Trevor Lawrence. All those playoff wins that they're just stacking up with Trevor Lawrence. The Minnesota Vikings defensive roster is still pretty bad. And they're they're gonna be trading up for like QB4 in this draft, giving up a lot of assets for it. What what is going to turn out to be multiple first round picks. That's what you want. And then Detroit, who of course was better than Green Bay last year, although the Packers went in on Thanksgiving, short week, national television game, island game, only game on. And they put it on Detroit. They put it on Detroit. That team has questions on defense. DJ Reader's a nice piece for them. But the secondary is still a question mark. The offense is still heavily reliant on Ben Johnson. So long term, he's probably not going to be there. He's probably going to be a head coach, if not this offseason, next offseason. And and I hope he learns the lesson from someone like Byron Leftwich, who it seemed like had the Jacksonville job, was quibbling over who the GM was going to be. He wanted to bring his guy. Jacksonville said, thanks, but no thanks. And do you know where Byron Leftwich is coaching now? He's not a head coach in the NFL. I know that. I know that for absolute sure. Ben Johnson's got to strike while the iron is hot. They're going to pay Jared Goff. They're going to give him 40 plus million. Well, how does that impact the rest of your team? You got to nail the draft. Now, they've been really good at the draft the last couple of years, but these things are highly variant. And even if they do, Jordan Love right now is the best quarterback in the division. He has the most upside in the division right now. And even when Caleb Williams gets in the building, that's going to be true for at least a year in all likelihood. Because the Packers have the best infrastructure in the league and in the conference, in the division. Let's let's see if we can finally get there. We got there. We found it. We landed the plane. And they've they've made the changes to the coaching staff, the low-hanging fruit. Jeff Halfley in, Joe Barry out. We're going to talk about some of the things Devondre Campbell said coming up in a second. And, And all of this is before they add Xavier McKinney. They add Josh Jacobs. They add young, highly talented character players. I think they have the best roster in the division. They have the best quarterback in the division. They have the best head coach in the division. They are set up and they have the most draft capital in the league this year by total picks. I mean, they have a chance to to get absolutely loaded for bear. They want to go trade up, they can. They want to trade for a player, they can. So many options for them. So what was true a year ago? We were projecting with Jordan Love, but we weren't because the the answer was, if he's the guy, then you've got a guy. If he stinks, you've got a top pick and extra draft capital to go get your guy. And if he's somewhere in between, you have a tough decision to make, but you probably need to just move on. Now they got lucky that they did not end up in between and they were like a game in terms of the playoffs away from doing that. Now, if Jordan Love played the way that he did and they missed the playoffs, I think you still can give him the contract, but he goes out and plays awesome against Dallas in his first ever playoff game. Dismantles the Cowboys. And then for for two and a half quarters is lights out against the 49ers as well. In a game that the Packers probably should have won. The odds don't reflect it, but you can make the case that this is the best team in the NFC. 
and they certainly have the potential to be the best team in the NFC. All of the young players on this roster, Jordan Love in year two as the starter. You, you get Jaden Reed in year two. You get Dontavian Wicks in year two. Luke Musgrave and Tucker Craft in year two. Carl Brooks and, and Kobe Wooden in year two. Lucas Van Ness in year two with an elevated role now that Kingsley Nibari is hurt. This plan has them in position to once again rule the North, no matter what Bears fans tell you. Now, was it perfect getting here? Were there issues last year? Are they being publicly aired, the grievances? Yes. We're going to talk about that in just a second here on Locked on Packers. Did you know that even if you have a 401k for retirement, you can still have an IRA? Robinhood has the only IRA that gives you a 3% boost on every dollar when you contribute to Robinhood Gold. But get this, now through April 30th, Robinhood is even boosting every single dollar you transfer in from other retirement accounts with a 3% match. That's right, no cap on the 3% match. Robinhood Gold gets you the most for your retirement thanks to an IRA with a 3% match. This offer is good through April 30th. Get started at Robinhood.com slash boost. Subscription fees apply. And now for some legal info. Claim as of Q1 2024 validated by Radius Global Market Research. Investing involves risk, including loss. Limitations apply to IRAs and 401ks. 3% match requires Robinhood Gold for one year from the date of the first 3% match. And you must keep Robinhood IRA for five years. The 3% matching on transfers is subject to specific terms and conditions. Robinhood IRA available to U.S. customers in good standing. Robinhood Financial LLC member SIPC is a registered broker-dealer. And as you know, Locked On has launched the first ever National Sports 24-7 streaming channel, Locked On Sports Today. Baseball fans, mark your calendars for March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern for the best MLB season preview coming exclusively to Locked On Sports Today. On March 20th at 7 p.m. East, be the first to get local insight from the Major League Baseball local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network. Find it on March 20th at 7 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On Sports Today 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube or the free Amazon Fire TV channels app. Devondre Campbell had some thoughts. (laughs) That's an understatement. Devondre Campbell had some thoughts on being released. Said the Packers didn't come to him asking for a pay cut. They just cut him. That the coaches did not put him in a position to succeed and it wasn't until the end of the year when he started having private conversations with Matt LaFleur, insisting that they blitz more, that they play more man coverage, that the defense started to play better. And that one of the reasons why he didn't play as well the last two years was bad coaching and personnel issues. Now, I agree with a lot of that. There were personnel issues. There were coaching problems. I I respect Devondre Campbell for saying, I'm not going to let people slander me. This, was, this started in response to a, a video that was put out of a specific play where he does not look particularly good against Tampa Bay. And it turns out there was supposed to be a safety rotation. Rudy Ford was trying to get Jonathan Owens lined up properly. He didn't. The coverage gets busted. And so Campbell is, is left out of position trying to cover up for that. I don't, I don't want to parse every piece of this argument. But it's a good reminder that we don't always have all the information when we're trying to make these assessments. Now, I think there were plenty of times when it's it's clear what the assignment is and Devondre Campbell just did not consistently complete the assignment. But I certainly believe that the coaching staff, which the Packers overhauled in the offseason, did not put these p- players in a position to succeed. Now, what's interesting is one of the points that Campbell makes is he they, the defense wanted him to play with more vision to the quarterback. That's exactly the defense that they brought in. That Matt LaFleur very clearly wanted to play a certain kind of way. Now, he said he didn't hire Jeff Halfley because of the defense that he was running. And and it is the case that he interviewed defensive coaches from all different kinds of defensive trees. Devondre Campbell also said that he believes Quay Walker is a perfect fit for this new defense. We'll see about that. The problem is the Packers are still a linebacker short, at least. Jerome Baker's off the board. All the Josie Jewell's off the board. Like all of the guys that you can talk yourself into in the free agent market, they're off the board. There's not really anyone to trade for. 
Bobby Okereke from the Giants is like the only guy who's that appealing and on a team that may be willing to trade him because like, where are they going? But something drastic needed to change in this defense. We know that. I also think it's important that players feel empowered to push back on narratives that they don't like. I want to hear from players. I want to hear from them. If they think there's something out there that's not true about them, I want them to say it. I want them to feel empowered to say it. I also don't want the excuse making. That's going to happen too. It's just always going to happen. I mean, I've, I've, I've gotten messages from players. And, and that's, fi- that's fine with me. Because sometimes it's real and sometimes it's, you know, I'm like, okay. You believe that. I get it. But like, that's not what we're watching. <laughs> what I find troubling is this idea that, you know, Devontae Campbell basically said in 2021, he was all pro essentially because he did not listen to what Joe Barry was saying. That means in 2021, you have a player and the coaches are watching the tape. They know what the assignments are. And so this is a situation where, how did it get to this point? Three years of struggle where you're trying to play a defense where the safeties have to be part of the run fits. You didn't do anything to go get the right safeties to be part of part of those run fits. How did this happen? It's not, it's not a good look. And I know, you know, we, we go, it's a little bit of whiplash. We go from praising them in the first segment for all of the work that they've done. But that's not to say that this is perfect. And I think... Uh, an anecdote like this makes clear how dysfunctional the staff was. And and Devondre Campbell said, look, I love the organization. He very clearly liked Matt LaFleur, trusted Matt LaFleur to go to Matt LaFleur and say, hey, we got to make some changes. And they did. And so Matt agreed. This is, by the way, another reason why you just like, when, when, it, when it gets to this point, when you have to have secret clandestine meetings, redundant, with your head coach, because the defensive coordinator doesn't know what he's doing, It's time to be done. It's time to move on. And when you have your your middle linebacker, your greened out player, your signal caller on defense going, I had to not listen to my coaches because they consistently did not have us in the right positions. How as a head coach, can you allow that to happen over time? It does not reflect well on Matt LaFleur, unfortunately. Assuming this is true. And all we have is his word. At some point, we'll get to hear from Matt LaFleur. I hope he gets asked about it. But there's also a reason. There's a new defensive coordinator and and an almost entirely new staff. So you you have to put all these things into some amount of perspective. But I think for the Packers, Matt LaFleur, this needed to change. And it was obviously dysfunctional. Behind the scenes. I, I just I don't know how you can come to any other conclusion. Now, you know, as has been pointed out, Darnell Savage didn't leave and flame the organization. Jonathan Owens didn't leave and flame the organization, the defense. Didn't blame anybody else. So there is a line to walk here. And again, I want players to feel like, hey, I want to set the record straight on some of this stuff. At least as they see it, because that is what it is. It is the record as they see it. We've all been in situations at our jobs and and... It is often a fool's errand, almost always, in fact, a fool's errand to compare any other job to to an NFL locker room or an NFL organization. But we have all been in a position where we felt like or a friend, a colleague felt like or someone that worked for us felt like we or they were being wronged. They were being treated unfairly and everyone else was going, no, you're not. No, you're not. We don't know the truth of the matter. We don't. But I think the actions tell us a lot. The actions that the Packers took to clean house 
That says drastic changes needed to be made. And that's true. That's very clearly true. Now, this does, unfortunately, create a problem for the Packers. Not, not the, the drama, no. Even if Quay Walker is good, they're still a linebacker short. And I don't know where they're going to get it. I don't. Because the draft stinks. The free agent market is a disaster. And there's not really much on the trade market. So you're, you're, you're not only losing a player who, you know, for whatever you want to say about him, was still a solid player last year. I think pretty clearly not the guy he was in 2021. And, and you can go back and look at this is not about This is not about crapping on Devondre Campbell, but you go back and look at his career. He has one great season and then a bunch of other seasons where he was more or less the guy that he's been the last two years in Green Bay. Like, that's why he was on, he's going to be on his fourth team in his career. So, that's part of this too. But, Quay Walker and Isaiah McDuffie, that ain't going to cut it. And I don't, I, I don't know where they go from here. I really don't. They were reportedly interested in, in some of these linebackers in that mid-tier, that like six to nine million kind of range. But they didn't pull the trigger. Now, maybe they're waiting. They figure after the draft, some guys will shake loose. They figure, you know, post-June 1, some guys will shake loose. In training camp, some guys will shake loose. And maybe they just go the Devondre Campbell route, sign somebody off the street and go. It is the case, to me anyway, that Xavier McKinney can cover up for a lot of those weaknesses. If you need your safeties to be in the run fit, he can be a part of the run fit. I think bringing back Rudy Ford makes a lot of sense. I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen that already, but maybe the fact that we haven't really heard anything about Rudy Ford suggests that they're working on a deal and they're letting him, hey, take some calls, see what's out there. If you, if you can't find anything, we'd love to have you at this price, at this number. I think Rudy Ford is a really nice fitness to Xavier McKinney. I've been saying that since before they signed Xavier McKinney. I felt like regardless of who their free safety was going to be, that post safety, that Rudy Ford was a really nice fit in this defense. And I hope they give him a chance to do it. But this linebacker spot, this, this goes so far beyond, you know, social media drama. And I think the Packers have to find a solution. They found a solution, I think, for the coaching problems or at least attempted a solution. There's still a personnel problem here at safety and at linebacker. And they got to get that part of this fixed. Because it seems like they fixed the one problem, the problem that Devondre Campbell was mad about. But Devondre Campbell's departure creates another problem or exacerbates a problem that already existed. And I just I just don't know if there's great answers for that. We'll try. We'll look at it in our Mock Draft Monday coming up in just a second here on Locked on Packers. Today's episode brought to you by our friends at Game Time. You shouldn't have to worry when you buy tickets to your next big event. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. With killer last-minute deals, all-in prices, views from your seats, and their best price guaranteed, Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Last-minute tickets? Game Time's got them. Flash deals, zone deals? Game Time's got them. Plus, views from your seat for every seat in the venue. Know what you're getting before you buy it. And the game time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If you find the tickets in the same section row for less, game time will credit you 110% of the difference. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Download the game time app, create an account, and use code locked on for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem code locked on for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, the lowest price guaranteed. And thanks to everyone who makes Locked On Packers their first listen every day. We hope you like starting your day with us as much as we like starting our day with you. Locked On has launched the first ever national sports 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube. And now it's also available on Amazon Fire TV and the free Fire TV channels app. Locked On Sports Today is here for you 24-7 covering the top sports stories of the day with the local experts of Locked On plus our national shows covering every league. Find Locked On Sports Today now available on the free Fire TV channels app. All right, so our first Mock Draft Monday since the free agent spending spree. How does that affect the way that the Packers go into this draft? Well, I think it makes it easier to feel like you can let the safety market come to you. They still need another safety, although I like Anthony Johnson Jr. as a developmental guy. I remember, still just learning to play safety. I hope they can bring back Rudy Ford. It's not a great safety draft. 
There are some guys I kind of like, but that's about it. So at 25, now part of this is I just love the player and I I kind of just I kind of just wanted to do it. But Nate Wiggins at his pro day at Clemson weighed in at 182. Now that's still skinny, but it turns out he was sick at the combine when he weighed in at you know 173 or whatever it was. He was listed, I believe, at Clemson at 180. So if he can add these 183, like can he add five pounds? Like I know they want guys to be 190 plus, but he runs 429. He plays physically despite his size. He is just, he's 20 years old. He's probably going to get bigger. Just as we get older, we get a little bit bigger. And even if he, even if some of the weight is not like pure muscle, great weight, fine. He runs 429. Who cares? If he all of a sudden runs 434, not that big a deal. 435, not that big a deal. I just, I, I love the player so much. And okay, start him in the slot if you want to. Smaller player. Give him a chance to grow into his body and then he can play outside. He's not an ideal slot, but like in a a zone defense, in a press man defense, on third downs, he's someone who can play sticky man coverage for you. I really like this. If this happened, like I I think it'd be, if if he's there at 41, let's put it that way. I think they would take him. I, I don't know if they would at 25, but I would. And him getting back into the 180s was a big deal to me. Not just 180. It was 182, 183. That's nice. Like you're you're you know one meal at Culver's away from being 185 at that point. So I'm fine with that. At 41, a player that I would be fascinated to see Green Bay take Jackson Powers Johnson, the center from Oregon, not on Bob McGinn's scouting survey, not in the top 50. I wonder if the league is not as high on him as draft Twitter is. But a senior bowl player, someone who has positional versatility, is a bad, bad dude. Powerful, huge. He's built like SpongeBob, like he is a squ- he is a rectangle. And this is right in the range where they took Ellen Jenkins, a center guard. I mean, Jackson Power Johnson comes in right away and competes with Josh Myers and probably wins that job outright. And then, hey, maybe you give J- Josh Myers a chance to play guard. But I think this makes a ton of sense for them. At 58, this is where you have to try and get your linebacker if you can. I don't want to use any more premium pick than that. Edron Cooper at 58. Test it out really well. This is where I think it starts to match value. We know he can come downhill. We know he can come downhill, play the run, make tackles for loss in the backfield, rush the quarterback. How does he fare moving backward? This is going to be a guy that I think we we will see more and more and more in mocks. You know, it, some some of the public boards, the, the Daniel Jeremiah board has him in the top 30, has him as a first round pick. I would not be interested in that. No, thank you. 58, now we're talking. At 88, Andrew Phillips, the corner from Kentucky, a slot player, can play outside, but also has experience in the slot. He tested really well, ran really fast. SEC, I think they need to revamp this corner room. And he is someone who can press man. Just bring in these guys. As many guys as you can cover, you got to bring them in. And I just like, you got Xavier McKinney. So I kind of don't care who the other safety is. I'm not really worried about finding that guy. I'm not worried about like pressing and rushing to find him. I'm just going to take, I'm going to find the value. Premium position, corner. And then at 91, Mason McCormick, the guard from South Dakota State, tested off the charts. He had a 996 relative athletic score. Can play center, can play guard. They've already hit. They've, they've, got, a, they've got a jackrabbit on the team who's really good. Maybe they can do it again. I think this is this is a, a draft where you can you can take some shots on the inside to, to develop that because that's where you have the issues. Center and guard. Rashid Walker and Zach Tom can be your tackles for the next six, eight years. No problem. No problem. 
You got to get that interior fixed. And getting Xavier McKinney just, it cleans up so much for you. It really does. All right, we're back tomorrow. More as we as we head toward, we're, we're in the middle of pro day season. We're now just a little over a month away before we get the NFL draft, five weeks away. It's going to be fun. It's going to be a lot of fun. Follow me on Twitter, Peter underscore Bukowski. Follow the podcast on Twitter, Locked on Packers. Instagram, Locked on Packers. TikTok, for as long as we have TikTok, Locked on Packers. And of course, on YouTube, Locked on Packers. Subscribe anywhere you can find podcasts, Locked on Packers, so you can stay Locked on Packers.